Okay, this lecture is about myeloperoxidase and phosphatidylserine and blood flow and atherosclerosis and heart disease. I've actually talked about MPO in previous lectures as part of these much longer lectures, like two and a half hours long, hours long. So I wanted to have a specific short, this is going to be a short lecture on MPO, myeloperoxidase, and phosphatidylserine and how they both are bad for blood flow and they're both increased in their activity in the presence of uh, eating a high fat meal. So here's an article from JAMA, Journal of the American Medical Association, and it says the association of MPO levels uh, from neutrophils um, is associated with increased risk of CAD, coronary artery disease, okay? Blood MPO levels are significantly greater in patients with CAD, coronary artery disease, than controls, okay? MPO is an abundant enzyme secreted by activated neutrophils. High fat diet activates the neutrophils and it causes them to release that, okay? MPO can also use up nitric oxide, which is needed for vasodilation and then decrease the ability of that vasodilation to occur, okay? So here is EC is endothelial cell. EG is endothelial glycocalyx, which means these little glycoproteins, sort of sugar-coated proteins that stick up from the cell. You can think of these little uh, sugar-coated proteins, uh, the endothelial glycocalyx, as being like trees on a mountain. If you're flying a helicopter over a mountain, these are the trees you would see on top of it. The mountain itself would be like the endothelial cell. So what happens is neutrophils, like red blood cells, have negative charges normally all around them, and that's called a zeta potential. But when activated by a high-fat meal, they will release MPO, myeloperoxidase, and these positive charges will then interact with the endothelial glycocalyx. And the endothelial glycocalyx has got negative charges on it from the heparin sulfates. And so these will bind with the positive charges and they'll cause the, the glycocalyx to collapse downward. And that's bad because once they collapse downward, they free up access to this neutrophil receptor. So here's a neutrophil receptor. Normally these glycoproteins are protecting it or blocking it from the neutrophil itself. This second half of the picture shows heparin, the medication, which has lots of negative charges on it, how it can carry away the MPO. So in this context, it would be a good thing. Well, first of all, like we said, the neutrophil releases MPO. MPO causes the endothelial glycocalyx to collapse down. Once it collapses down, then the neutrophil can bind to neutrophil receptors on the endothelial cells. This then causes the neutrophil to release these MMPs, matrix metalloproteinases, which are proteinases. They cut proteins and they will cleave the glycocalyx even more and it'll be shed away from the endothelial cell, which again makes it more prothrombotic. That's all bad. So this is a major negative effect caused by high fat meal on uh, red blood cells and on the endothelium. Endothelium means the lining of arteries. Okay, so here's a picture of normal. Normally all these negative charges from the heparin sulfates on the endothelial glycocalyx sticking up like trees on a mountain. That's normal, that's your baseline. And the neutrophil receptors are buried deep uh, beneath the glycocalyx, so the neutrophil cannot normally see them because it's negatively charged glyco it's negatively charged zeta potential would cause it to bounce away from these guys. All right. So now after high fat meal, the neutrophil is activated, releases these positively charged MPOs, myeloperoxidase molecules. They cause the glycocalyx to collapse down because the positive charge pulls the negative charges down. Then you've got the neutrophil now gaining access to the neutrophil receptor releasing its metallic metalloproteinases, which will cleave more glycocalyx components like this and further damage the glycocalyx. And they're showing how you can reverse this with heparin because it's negatively charged and it can carry away the MPOs. Okay, so we're just making the point. MPOs increase by half fat meals and it's bad for blood flow and it makes your blood more prone to clot. So here's another article. What does it say? Neutrophils are known to be activated and to degranulate on a high fat diet. Okay. Another article, activation of neutrophils is induced by a high-fat diet. So these are reasons why you hear all these people on the Internet trying to tell you keto diet, low-carb, all this nonsense is good for you. How could it be good for you if it's damaging your red blood cells, it's damaging your arterial, arterial lining cells, your endothelium? It's not, okay? So the benefit of this knowledge is people can't trick you into doing stupid stuff so easily with your diet and your nutrition, okay? Okay, here's just a picture showing a little bit more detail what happens with the neutrophil. Neutrophils are also called PMNs, polymorphonuclear leukocytes, okay? So the, the neutrophil, neutrophil is an easier name, 
It has negative charges around. This is the zeta potential. And normally the endothelial lining cell has its own zeta potential, negative charges from its heparin sulfates. Okay. So now when it releases MPO because it's been activated by the fat, the MPO will now cause the glycocalyx to collapse down. Now the neutrophil can bind a receptor here. Here's the receptor. And it'll release its matrix metalloproteinases. They're going to cause cleavage more of the glycocalyx. And this neutrophil can potentially squeeze its way in between endothelial cells and get into the subendothelial space. This is all bad. You don't want any of these things to happen. It's sort of like an inflammatory response. Okay, so... Well, we, like we said, the MPO is made by the neutrophils. Cationic means positive. I remember a cat purrs, so that's how I remember cation is positive. Anionic is negatively charged, okay? I just remember it has a letter N in the beginning of the word for a negative and has a negative charge on it. That's not that important, but it'll come up sometimes, the idea of a cation especially being positive charged, positively charged. Okay, um, MPO makes ROS, reactive oxygen species, and it consumes nitric oxide, your vasodilator. You don't want your vasodilator consumed up because then your arteries are less able to dilate. So that's going to decrease oxygenation to the tissues. That's going to decrease blood delivery. This is going to cause inflammation, which can damage cells. Another big thing MPO does is it binds to the red cells and it changes their shape. So effective myeloperoxidase on the biophysical properties of red blood cells. It makes them less deformable, less elastic. Same thing as less flexible. Because remember, a red blood cell, let's see, I'll get a picture here. A red blood cell is normally bigger than a uh, capillary. Red cell is typically about 7 microns. Capillary is about 5 microns. So the red blood cell normally has to deform itself to pass through that capillary. If the red blood cell is stiffened, less flexible, less able to bend, then it has a harder time pushing itself through that capillary. So blood pressure has to go up. Okay, this is just another article talking about high fat meal changing red blood cell shape. Called the, the words they use is pathological, meaning abnormal, bad. Erythrocyte is red blood cell. Remodeling means changes in shape. Okay, so for 10 healthy people, they fed them high fat meal with milkshake, meaning primarily sat fat. Red blood cells are by far the most common cell in your blood. For every white blood cell, there's 700. That's 700 red blood cells. So anything that happens to them in the blood is a very big deal. Okay, so here's red blood cells at normal baseline. They're sometimes called a biconcave disc. They're a little thinner in the center. Um, but when you eat a high-fat meal, you get some acanthocytes. Acantho means thorn, like in Greek. A for acantho, A for asymmetric. So you get these little spurs, per outward projections from the red blood cells. See how deformed it is? You can tell that's not going to be effective at delivering oxygen in comparison with these normal cells. These are perfectly designed by nature to do exactly what their job requires them to do, deliver oxygen to tissue. So this is a messed up cell, okay? Okay, now here's an echinocyte. And remember, echino means like porcupine, hedgehog. And you can also remember E for equally spaced. The spurs are, are circumferential around the echinocyte versus here they're asymmetric. They're just mostly in one location. You also get foamy uh, changes, you know, fat accumulation like changes, it seems, in your monocytes, okay, and that's bad too, but that's not as major a thing for our purposes at this time, but trust me, that's a big deal that your red blood cells are deformed in their shape, and they become more prone to clotting. That's basically kind of a, you know, a, it's a major problem. It is really bad, okay. Now, there's other things we can get into on a different day. I'll talk to you about the research of Douglas Cowell, but for now, we're not going to get into that. I've actually given lectures about him before, because he's really big on these red blood cells shape changes and all the damage that goes with that. Okay, uh, now we're going to talk about the next topic with regard to red blood cells after high-fat meal, and this is phosphatidylserine. Phosphatidylserine is, no, is primarily initially in a young red blood cell located on the inner leaflet of the plasma membrane. The plasma membrane circles the entire outer surface of a red blood cell, and the phosphatidylserines will flip at a more rapid rate to the outer leaflet of that plasma membrane. Okay, and so what happens when the, you have more PS for phosphatidylserine in the outer leaflet the red blood cell becomes more stiff, less deformable. And that means blood pressure has to go up to push it through the capillary. And it causes other problems too. By the way, trap moving from the internal to the external leaflet of the plasma membrane, it's called a phospholipid bilayer, meaning there's two leaflets, inner and outer leaflet. So externalization is to flip into the external 
um, leaflet of the, the plasma membrane. In addition, these phosphatidyl serines, they're now on the outer surface. They will interact with receptors on the EC, the endothelial cell. They'll bind with the so-called RAGE, or RAGE receptor. This means receptor for advanced glycation end products. We talked about the large amounts of advanced glycation end products that come from diabetes, as well as from eating high-fat meals with a lot of meat in them, okay? Um, in general, foods that are high in fat and animal products and proteins, they have more advanced glycation end products ingested by when you eat them. So there's two ways, you, two main ways you get AGEs from eating high fat, high meat foods, and from um, diabetes. Okay, the next thing is PSR. So PSR means phosphatidylserine receptor. Both of these receptors are on the endothelial cells and can bind to the red blood cell phosphatidylserines in the outer leaflet. Okay, so you, you don't want that. It makes your blood more prothrombotic. Prothrombotic means more prone to clotting. That's bad, okay? It makes them stiffer, less deformable. So blood pressure has to go up. Higher blood pressure increases risk of um, atherosclerosis development, meaning also heart attacks and stroke. Okay, then briefly, I just mentioned heparin. It has a lot of negative charges, so it's, it's the opposite of myeloperoxidase, and it helps to come in and all these negative charges when it's given as a medication in the appropriate setting. It'll break apart these interactions of MPO, and it'll you know get the, the blood to not stick together. Okay, that's what you want. It's like it's like introducing an increased zeta potential. Okay, this is just briefly something from Roy Swang. He's the famous Roy Swang who had the best results in the world for treating multiple sclerosis. He comes originally from Canada. In 1954, he went to Oregon University, and um, he's friends with Dr. McDougall. They did some research together on treating multiple sclerosis patients. Some of the big stuff he did was, look at this, back in 1960, this guy's making incredible discoveries back in 1960. And the reason that's funny is modern researchers, you can almost never find them doing useful, basic work like this. I mean, this is stuff we want to know. And he found that when he fed a hamster a high-fat meal of saturated fat, they would drop their oxygen delivered to the adjacent brain tissue by like 30%. That's a lot. Okay, so anyways, that was um, the lecture. I hope that was helpful. And the whole point of it was a high-fat meal does some major bad things to your blood flow. And that's the reason why when you hear somebody trying to tell you keto, low-carb, carnivore diet is good for you, ask them these questions. Well, what about myeloperoxidase? What about Rouleau formation? What about phosphatidylserine, okay? Uh, what about postprandial lipid endotoxemia, okay? What about leaky gut? What you'll see is that there's so many problems add up, including what about lipid peroxidation that, out, that add up from eating a high-fat meal. It's really not good for health. And so no matter how much they sort of shake and dance and wave their hands, you know, the facts aren't on their side.